Welcome to this Mosaic tutorial. We will go step by step through some of the tutorials of the co-simulation framework Mosaic. If you would like to look more in detail into these tutorials, you can visit our documentation at Read the Docs. You will find it at mosaic.readthedocs.io. Here you find many tutorials and we will now go through the first of them. So first we will integrate a simple simulation model into Mosaic then create a simulation scenario, um, then also add a control mechanism and add this to the scenario as well. You can find this code um, at our GitLab at gitlab.com, mosaic, mosaic examples, mosaic tutorials on binder. Here you can just check out the code and find some Jupyter notebooks which you can execute locally. Or you can also just click on this launch binder button and use it directly in a Jupyter lab in your browser. I already opened it here. And um, here you see the start page, which is giving an overview of the different tutorials. I would just jump directly into the first part of it. So the goal here is to integrate the simulation model into a mosaic simulation. So first we need a model, which is just a really simple model here. Um, as we can see here, we have um, two inputs, a delta and an init, and we have one output, which is called val, which is the value of the model. Um, the definition is given here. So in the beginning, at simulation time zero, um, the val is set to the init val and then in the next steps um, the old val is just um, added with the delta we have. So a simple implementation in Python is given here. We have the class which is called model. We have the Python initialization where we can provide a value for this init val this will then be stored in the val variable and the delta will by default be set to, uh, to 1. Then for the step where the calculation of the model takes place, we just um, add the val with the delta. So now we want to integrate this mosaic. For this we use the high-level API for Python and here we have to import the Mosaic API, um, yeah, some Jupyter stuff, and we integrate. Uh, we also import the example model, which was shown in the last notebook. Then we have to define the meter object of our simulator. We define the type as time-based, and we define our models, which is just one model, which is called example model, and as shown before we have one parameter which is this init val and we have two attributes delta and val. So when we um, ex execute the model we have shown on the last notebook uh, we can just import it and instantiate it with the init val and then you can here see that um, yeah, the value is as expected, 42, and the delta is just 1 uh, by default. Um, yeah, now to integrate this model in, in a mosaic simulator, we create a new class, example sim, and use the abstract class simulator from the mosaic API here. Um, in the Python initialization, we call the, the super init and um, yeah, set a default word for word uh, um, a default string for the entity ID prefix. Uh, create a empty dictionary for storing the entities later and um, a variable for storing the current simulation time. And now we have to implement the init, create and step and get data from Mosaic to allow the integration. So the first thing is the init which will be executed when the world starts 
is called in the scenario. So here we get a time resolution, but this is not important for this, um, so here it will not be used. And the entity ID prefix can be overwritten. Um, so we check if there is a value, and if a value is available, we will just overwrite our previous set value, and then we return our meter object, which I described before. So after this init, the next step would be that the create is called when in a scenario um, the model instances are created. So here we get the information if there should be multiple um, instances created, uh, how the model is called, and the init val, which is the parameter for our model. So first um, we see how many entities we have already for the creation of the entity ID, create an um, empty list for the entities, which will be then sent back to Mosaic in the end. And now we go with the for loop through the um, number of entities we want to create. Um, then we create a model instance, which is the example model shown before, and we provide here the info um, about the init val. Then we just create an entity ID with the prefix and the current number. We store our model instance created before to our entities dictionary and then we create an entry in our entities list to send it back to Mosaic so that Mosaic knows which model instances were created. Then the next um, thing to implement is the step function. Here we get the current simulation time, a dictionary with the inputs and the max advance which will be not used here. Um, first we store the current time in our variable for a later usage. Then we go through our self-entities items, um, so through the entity IDs of the model instances, and check if the entity ID is in the inputs. Um, and then we get the attributes which are in the inputs and um, see if there is um, yeah, a new delta and store this delta then to the model instance if there is a new value for it. After we did this the model instance is stepped so the real calculation is done and then we return um, the next time our simulator should be stepped. So this is then the current simulation time plus one, so our step size is one second. Then the next step is to implement the get data. Here we get again a dictionary, which is called this time outputs. Um, we go through this outputs dictionary with a for loop and get the entity IDs and the attributes, like is shown here. Um, the structure that we have the model name and then the attributes. So we go through them. Um, we take the the model from the entities list, um, which fits to this entity ID. We store the time and then um, yeah, we go through the attributes and check if the attributes are inside of our self meta description and if they are, then we just um, fetch the value from the model and write it to our data dictionary, which will then be sent back to Mosaic so that Mosaic gets the value. So this return value would then look like similar like this, that we have the model name, we have the attribute name and the value for the attribute. To make um, our simulator executable, we just have to make sure that um, this Mosaic API start simulation is called because this starts the process which will then do the communication with Mosaic. So this um, was the implementation of our simulator. So now we will see how we can integrate this in the simulation. <clears throat> so first we have to import Mosaic and Mosaic Util here. Um, then we define a sim config with two simulators, the example sim and the collector, 
both are using the in process call with Python and reference the, the file we have for them and the class. Um, then we define the end for the simulation, which is 10, which means that the simulation will just have 10 seconds of simulation time. Then the next step is that we create a world and provide the information from the sim config to it. Uh, then we will start the simulators. So here the init will be called of the simulator. Um, we do it for both the example sim and the collector. Um, uh, by the way, the collector is also a quite simple simulation model, um, which is also available here in the Stupid Lab to have a look into it. Uh, but I will now just describe what it does. Um, it will just um, take all inputs, store them, and at the end of the simulation, print them out so that we can see what happened during the simulation. For the example simulator, we also um, set here the entity id prefix which will then be used um, to override the internal value and yeah after starting the simulators um, we can instantiate the models so here we take the example sim created before and call the example model um, which was defined in the meter object and provide the init value as parameter. For the collector, um, yeah, this is called monitor and doesn't have any parameters we use here. Then after instantiating our models, we can connect them. So we have now one model and one monitor and we connect them um, and define the attributes which are val and delta, so the data flow will be from the model to the monitor. Um, now after we created uh, one connection, we maybe want to create more entities, so here we call again the example sim, example model, and now we call explicitly here the create, provide also information about the number, so here we want to have two entities and provide the init val equals 3. And then we use um, the mosaic util function connect many to one where we have to provide the word, the input model and well, a list of input models which were created before and the monitor and then again the attributes. So after doing this connections our simulation should look like this that we have three models and one collector and all three models send their val and delta output to the collector. So now we can run the simulation and see what the collector prints. So we see the simulation was quite fast and we see here the output of this example sim. So as expected the delta is all the time um, 1, so you see here the simulation time and the value so at simulation time 0 is 1 and also at simulation time 9 and all in between as the delta uh, has never changed here in this scenario and you see that the value um, is in the beginning is 3 and then just counting until it reaches 12 and for the other models as they have a different init well they start here um, at 4 and count up to 13 so as this is not so interesting, we now want to add a control mechanism in the next step. So the idea here is that we don't just want to count um, our model, but we want to keep the value somehow in the range of minus 3 to 3. So we create this control mechanism or this agent or controller which will look at the current val and if it um, will be higher than 3 or lower than minus 3 then the delta will be changed to 1 or minus 1 depending. So the implementation looks similar like before. We have to import the mosaic API, we define the meter. This time we have an event-based um, simulator as 
it is not providing always output it just has to provide output when it has to do some control action um, then we have to define our models here it's called agent it doesn't have any parameters and it has the attributes val in and delta we create the class controller which again uses the abstract class simulator from the api um, yeah, we call the super function, we create empty lists and dictionaries for the agents and data and so on. Um, then in the create call we can again provide um, a number but we don't have any additional parameters here. Um, yeah, we again see how many agents we have already, go with a for loop through the numbers of uh, to the range of um, of controllers to be created, define entity ID, store it to our um, dictionary and send back a list of the entities we created. Then the interesting part comes in the step function. So here um, we go again through the inputs dictionary. We take the values um, which are given here for delta. Um, so if there are some values then here we just take the first one um, then we do it similar for the for the val in um, where we check that we just have one input and take the value and store it here um, yeah and then here we check if the value now is higher than higher or equals three then we will set the delta to minus minus one to not um, yeah, go out of the range we wanted to keep uh, to, to stay in and if the value is lower than lower equals minus three we will set the delta to one otherwise we will just continue um, and have no output data so yeah if we have a delta then we will um, store it here in the and the data which will then be stored for using it later in the get data and here we return not a number like we did in the other simulator here we just return none which can be done in the event based simulator in mosaic and which means that we don't want to get called automatically we just want to get uh, want to be called when there is new input for us available for the controller So then the get data here, um, yeah, we go again through the output dictionary for, through the attributes and check if um, a, delta, a delta attribute is, is uh, requested and then if uh, that's the case then we just send back the new delta value. Here we just see the complete um, code but now we want to integrate this in our scenario. This scenario bases on the scenario we had before and it will just have some extensions. So here in the simconfig uh, we have the extension as we, that we added the example controller so then in the start simulators it's also the same as before we just add the start of the example controller Now in the instantiation it's a little bit different because we directly start three example models um, and we provide them different values for the init val, minus two, three and two. So we get then a list of three models and we create then um, our agents from the example controller and directly provide it with the information how many models we have so that in the end we have for each model one agent then we connect the models and the agents so we go with a for loop through all of them and um, yeah, establish a, a data flow from the model to the agent here we use the internal uh, renaming functionality by mosaic so the model has the output val 
which will then be translated um, to the input val in for the agent automatically. Then the second connection is the other way around from the agent to the model for the delta which might be set. set um, and as we have now a connection from the model to the agent and from the agent to the model, we have a cyclic dependencies, dependency and have to provide the information to Mosaic which of these should be executed first. So um, here we set this read equals true, which means this is the um, connection which should be executed later. So first um, this connection should be executed. Then we use again the connect many to one to connect um, all the models and agents also to the model uh, to the collector so that we see what happens in the simulation. So now our simulation should look like this. We have again the collector and three models. Uh, but the addition is that we have now three agents, one for each model. And from the model we get the val to the agent. And sometimes if something has to, some control action has to happen, then a delta is sent back from the agent to the model. So now we can just execute the simulation and see what are the results. So we see that the agents have, as expected, just um, an output for some simulation time. So for example here we have just a delta at simulation time 4 with a value minus 1. For the um, agent 1 we see that there are two values at simulation time 2 it was set to minus 1 and then later at simulation Step 8, it was set again to, zero, uh, to 1. Uh, here we see the uh, data for the model 0. So we see that here in the beginning we have always just a delta of 1. But then here, um, after it was set at simulation step 4 to minus 1, um, this information arrived then at time step 5 as we have set this connection to, to weak. This was then just um, yeah, arrived one simulation step later. And here we have then a delta of minus one. And as we can see here, the value um, always keeps in the range because it goes here up to three, but then the delta was changed and uh, it was decreasing again and reached minus two in the end. So this is the end of this tutorial. You can also find here in this um, in this Jupyter lab a third part, which is about um, same time loops, where um, yeah additional level of controller will be added. So one master controller controlling the three controllers we have here. <clears throat> but for this video, um, yeah this tutorials shown are enough and yeah if you would like to look in this more um, yeah, complicated or sophisticated um, tutorial then of course feel free to visit our read the docs page or directly use this Jupyter lab.